so it's day three of my um of my egg donor treatment i've completely forgotten it because that's one of the side effects of the medications that my brain has crawled out of my ear and left um <laughs> i'm also really really tired I, even though i'm sleeping eight hours um i'm not usually this tired um at this point in my cycle um usually kind of got over that so that's definitely a side effect because i'm really really tired and the, you know that the baggy puffiness is not cool um i have a headache a constant headache and that's apparently a side effect too and i have nausea on and off as well um which is not great um this morning i had um so in my um, actual pregnancies, I did have, suffer from hypermesis gravidarum, which is why I'm not having any more biological children of my own. Um, and, um, and that has triggered some of that stuff, because that tends to stay with you <laughs> forever. Um, and my husband was watching Taskmaster in bed this morning, and one of the people was about to eat a really gross food concoction, and I started to be like, mm -hmm. Um, the nausea was overwhelming and that was a big trigger for me and I was really not feeling very well. Um, he made me some food and I'm, I'm feeling delicate now. Delicate is the word. Like I think if someone, like I wouldn't be able to pick up my dog's poop today. That would just set me off. So um, yeah, tired, nausea, nauseated with a headache, like just a constant dull ache. I've had paracetamol and it hasn't gone away. Like, it's better, but it hasn't gone away. So that's that's what we're going through so far. Nothing else. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I mentioned I was tired. Um, <laughs> that's a real big one that happened. Um, like almost immediately, pretty much like within a few hours of me taking the first injection, I was like overwhelmingly tired, and then it's just really tired, really tired. Um. But, you know, actually, is my, my friend who's been through IVF said that it was from, like, when she then was pregnant, she was like, oh, it feels like exactly the same as when I was doing, uh, doing the IVF. Um, and it does. It does feel like early pregnancy. I do feel really, really, really tired and um, just a bit groggy. My head's just all over the place. So um, that's true. Uh, so I'm going to try and get up. I've literally, I don't know, I don't even know what time it is right now. There we go. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> I was up at 10 to 6 with my youngest son, which is usual. Um, I then took my injection at 20 past 6, and I've just been sat in bed watching TV and eating biscuits. Um, yeah, so I really need to get up because it's 11, <laughs> 11 o'clock. <laughs> Didn't even notice, literally just tired, and I was watching CSI. My eye. That seems like a better way to spend my Saturday morning. Um, anyway, that's this is my just day three blog, blog, and um, I will add day four on the end. So I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>
and I felt sick as well and I had um as I've talked about before I've had um I had hyperemesis which means severe pregnancy sickness hyperemesis gravidarum um in my pregnancies and it was so similar like so the triggers were really similar for me feeling nauseous and I was like oh no um but if two weeks of feeling ill in that way is what it takes for somebody to someone to have a baby who otherwise wouldn't have been able to have a baby then I can deal with that as long as it's not nine months <laughs> of it um that's you know I couldn't cope with that again but um I can I can deal with it for two weeks um and yeah I suddenly last night I couldn't sleep I think that's why I ended up having a late night because I suddenly realized it sounds a bit trivial but like the procedure to have it done to have the eggs taken out like oh no like some of those are randos are gonna see me naked from the waist down again <laughs> like because obviously when I had kids everyone saw that but I didn't really care and I'm like at least I'll be sedated and I know, like, I won't be aware of it, so this feels like a bit embarrassing, but never mind. I'll, uh, I'll not be aware of it, I'll be completely out for the count, so. <sighs> Hopefully, I won't be. Maybe I'm sick, feeling I'm sick today, but, um, I expect I probably will. It's not, I'm not nauseous enough that I can't eat anything, it's just, it was just annoying, like, um, I have to be careful of what smells I smell, otherwise it makes me feel ill. I'm going to try and keep remembering to take my multivitamin with folic acid. Um, I'm remembering it most days, but to be fair, I didn't remember it a lot when I was pregnant or trying for my children, so... I'm not expecting it to be any different this time, but I, uh, I am. I think I'm taking it more, um, just to try and remember. So I'm gonna go and do that now. See if I can get Phil to make me a cup of tea. <laughs> I am off out today with a friend, um, and um, socially distance, of course. And uh, I think the other thing that it popped up as well is that I've been really emotional, like anything will make me cry and I expected it to be like PMT um, or PMS and for me to be angry or annoyed really quickly but actually it's just been really emotional like I explained to a friend yesterday that this is going to make people laugh I'm sure especially if you know me personally um, that Tesco had stopped doing orange cho dark chocolate with orange oil and um, when they brought it back it had milk in and I'm allergic to milk so I couldn't drink that. I couldn't drink it, I couldn't I couldn't eat it. Um and I made me cry and then I cried. I was retelling the story. Obviously when it happened I didn't cry because I wasn't pumped and pumping myself with hormones. But retelling this story to my friend yesterday, I um I actually got really emotional and started crying. <laughs> the, the Tesco had stopped doing chocolate orange. Um chocolate dark chocolate with orange um and i feel like now this morning i'm like oh my god that's really pathetic but yesterday that was really upsetting to me and i did almost cry um and i was talking about an adopt an adoption documentary i had watched um that um you know talked about the stats of um how many children are in care or how many children were in care when it, the documentary was made and how many children are adopted each year and the difference between the number of children who are waiting to be adopted and the difference uh, uh, between the children number of children who are waiting to be adopted and the number of children who are actually adopted was really really big um and it was really sad and i got emotional talking about that too but i think i probably would have anyway um hopefully we'll do something about that in the future at least one anyway um yeah anyway i'm gonna go because i really need a cup of tea decaf tea because i am trying to be good make this eggy the best eggy it can be or, or these eggies pardon me <laughs> like because when i had the first scan um around the time i had ovulated they said that i had 19 follicles between my two ovaries so that's what they're aiming for is 19 eggs like as a maximum so that would be pretty awesome if they did because i think like 
they tend to give like four or five per person if they're all healthy um so it could potentially help a lot of people all in one go which would be really good so i'm gonna go and i will speak to you tomorrow tomorrow we start the um Faramadel injection as well which is um saying okay so there's one i'm taking right now is like hey mature all of those eggs that you could make not just one and then this next one is but don't ovulate them keep them in <laughs> so um we uh it probably means i have about when i start taking these injections tomorrow i probably have about a week left um uh, have a scan on Wednesday to see how it's all going, which should be cool. I will, uh, I will speak to you tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.